What up guys, so today's video is going to be a little different. We're normally working on our cars, but I'm going to be taking a break from those just for today. So we made a video about this thing about four months ago, I think, and I'm just now getting back to it. We picked this thing up from my parents' house, brought it here, and I really have not done anything to it since then. And I've always wanted to do more work to this thing. Even before we started the channel, I wanted to do more to this go-kart and make it a little more legit because it's kind of janky right now. That video when we brought this thing over here got a lot of views, like over half a million views. So I'm sure a lot of you guys watching right now subscribe to our channel to see more videos about this thing, but we have not made any videos about it since then. So I'm finally bringing it back up. I finally got some parts for this and I think you guys are gonna be pretty excited with what I have in store for this shopping cart. But real quick, I'm just gonna kinda go over what I did to make this thing and how it sits right now. And I know it is very janky at the moment, but I made this in my welding class. So I took welding all through high school and I think I made this my last year and I honestly made everything out of scraps I found in my welding shop. The only thing I paid for on this was this motor. This is a 49cc two-stroke, like off a little pocket bike. And I paid for that. And these two bearings on each side, these are just like one inch axle bearings. The axle is a piece of like scrap rod I found. I don't know where I even got that, but found that. And I also did pay for the chain and this rear sprocket right here. Everything else I got for free and I just kind of found it and slapped it all together. I got this shopping cart from a local skate park. Uh, it was right next to a Walmart and all the locals would go over to the Walmart and get McDonald's because there was McDonald's inside and on the way back they would sometimes bring back shopping carts from the Walmart and they'd put them in front of the jumps so they could jump over them and do tricks over them and stuff. And the kids would just beat the hell out of these things and I used to go to the skate park all the time when I rode my scooter and at some points there'd be like three or four of these shopping carts just chilling at the skate park and the kids would beat the crap out of them. The whole bottom part uh, that holds the wheels and the basket underneath would be like destroyed. They'd jump them off jumps and bend them all up and just pretty much destroy these shopping carts. So this one in particular was laying outside the skate park. That whole bottom section was pretty mangled. The wheels were busted off. So even if you tried to return this to Walmart, they probably would have just tossed it anyway because it was just scrap at that point. So we took the shopping cart, loaded it up because I had this idea of making a go-kart out of it a long time ago because I thought it would have been sick and I finally got a shopping cart to do it. And I took it home. First thing I did was cut off that bottom part and then brought the basket to my welding class and started from there. So this whole back end is made out of like one inch square tubing and that's pretty straightforward. I just welded it on from there. That's right where it got cut off from the original basket and wheels. And I don't know, the back of the shopping cart, you can pretty much understand how I did it. Just mounted the motor right there, made some mounts and just lined up this sprocket with the axle, ran a chain on it and that's how it drove. The front of it, however, I also did make completely homemade. The whole steering system was made by me in my welding class and I can tell you right now that this steering system sucks, like horribly. So, as you can see, it has a lot of play. You have to really crank the steering wheel to get it to do anything. And even at that point, if you hold it turned, they still have a lot of play in them. And that's just because of how I made the system. It's all sloppy, there's no hem joints, no t adjustable tie rods or anything like that. The wheels don't even line up perfect. I literally just bent rod and then fed it through here, but it did work at the time. This thing did run and drive and I could steer it and it did work and I would show you guys, but unfortunately the chain snapped and this pet cock leaks all the gas out anyway, so it won't even stay running on its own. It can run like off starter fluid for a few seconds, but that's about it. But. I did do the steering all by myself. Besides how sloppy it is, it did actually work pretty well. These front tires used to be solid PVC with just a lawnmower tire on the inside. And when I would go to turn, since they were PVC on the outside originally, it would just keep going straight. So they had no traction. These tires are actually real Goodyear's, I believe. These are a real tire that I cut up and put on the PVC wheel. I used to work at Discount Tire and these were two dead tires, so two bad tires, and I took those, cut them up, and put some tread on these wheels. And these wheels are very janky as well, but they did the job. 
and I did make these brackets as well in my class, so everything was completely homemade, and I'm going to be tearing this thing down all the way. The only thing I'm going to be using from this cart originally is just the basket. Everything you see is gonna be new by the time I'm done with it. I might leave the steering stuff just for now because I wanna focus on the back end of it and put a new motor on there and all that good shit, but I will be addressing the steering once I get all that figured out because the steering is very, very ghetto. But for now, I'm just gonna be focusing on the back of the cart. Get the back of it done, get the new motor on there, and we'll see where it goes from there. So real quick, I'm gonna show you guys the new motor I got for this thing. I do have the motor, and I already have some of this already planned out. So I think you guys are gonna be pretty excited to see this bad boy right here. So look at that. That is a Liffin 200cc five speed with an electric start. This thing makes 16 horsepower, and the original motor made two and a half. That is going to be going on this shopping cart, guys, so hopefully it's gonna be pretty badass. Originally, my plan was gonna to be to put a pit bike motor of this style on the back of the shopping cart because this is a 125 and a CRF 50 right here, and this thing has 12 horsepower, and it can almost do 60 miles an hour with me on it. If I re-geared it, I'm sure it could do it just fine. This is a four-speed manual, and it has plenty of power. The only problem with this is the design on these smaller pit bike engines. The cylinder head comes off like the tranny, I guess you would call it, like straight off vertically. Instead of that 200cc, it comes off right up and down. So what that allows me to do with the 200cc, since the cylinder head on this guy is up and down and not like out here on a pit bike engine, I can tuck it up closer to the back of the cart right here and it'll just look way better because my goal is to keep the axle in front of the motor. So I don't want the motor to be right here and then the axle to be behind it and then just have a really long wheelbase. I like the look of it all tucked together like that. So that was the goal was to keep the axle as far forward as I can. And that led to another problem which I will tell you guys about once I put this motor up on the cart and kind of show you guys how it's gonna look up on there. Okay, so I just got the motor kind of resting on the back of it, and just let me show you guys how badass that thing looks. I mean, this thing's gonna be sick if everything turns out how I want it to be. Let me get a thumbnail shot real quick. Something like that should work just fine. But this thing will hopefully be just, oh my gosh, it, it just looks so nice on there. So, by the way, this motor was 500 bucks on eBay, brand new, shipped to my door. And for you guys that watch us do car stuff, may complain, that I shouldn't be spending my money on the shopping cart, but I've always been wanting to get this thing done even before we started this channel. So I'm gonna throw a little money at this thing and hopefully this can also bring in some new subscribers and viewers because I really wanna make this build badass. I'm not gonna put all my time into this. This is gonna be a side thing. We're still gonna be working on the cars quite a bit, but I really wanted to get the ball rolling on this project. So let me explain that one problem I was talking about with where the motor needs to sit and having the axle in front of it. So the problem with this style motor and all the pit bike motors is the flywheel is right under here and the direction this sprocket rotates is forward just like that. You have to imagine there's like a rear tire right here or a rear axle and the chain just goes straight back and turns this way. So if I wanna keep the axle in front of it and everything is tucked in as I can, there's no way I can just run a chain from there down to the axle in front of it because all this stuff's in the way. There's a chance I could put it like kind of high up and then run the chain like diagonally and down, but that would start to look weird. So my solution is I got a jack shaft. This was like 30 bucks also off eBay. Also this motor is going to be sitting where that motor is at the moment. So imagine this motor right there. It's gonna be all the way to the right. So, I have this jack shaft right here, has two bearings and two little brackets to hold the bearings, two sprockets, and it has a keyway going all the way through it. This is going to be sitting something like this, right behind the motor, but like I said, on this side. And so then I'll have a chain going from here to this sprocket, and then a chain from that sprocket all the way forward to the axle. And I'm gonna try to keep the chain nice and tucked in without it rubbing on anything. And that's pretty much the plan for that. 
but these are the only two parts I actually do have for the cart at the moment. I still need to get a full rear axle set up and redo the whole back end. I'm getting rid of all this old, ugly square, rusted out, mild steel tubing. I'm gonna redo all of that and get this motor mounted and start going from there. Another issue is I'm six feet tall and me sitting in this little shopping cart is pretty cramped. And keep in mind, this is a five speed manual transmission engine. So I'm gonna have a clutch, I need to have a shifter, I'm gonna have brakes and I'm gonna have a gas pedal. So there's a lot of controls that I have to fit in this little tiny cart. So another thing I might be looking into is extending it just barely, not much because I don't wanna hurt the looks of it, but I am really tall and with it being so cramped in there and trying to fit all these controls in there, I need a little extra length to help like control it because I've sat in there and I'm just like really tucked in there. My knees are up past the cart and yeah, it's gonna be kind of hard to control like that. So what I may do is just take out this rear uh, flap right here and pretty much just extend it back to where this is. Just a couple extra inches will help me so much, but I'll get more into that once I start tearing into it. But that is another issue I might have to look at. But for now, I mainly just wanted to show you guys the new motor setup that is going on the shopping cart. So it is gonna be badass. Hopefully this thing will make it, I'm gonna to try to make this thing go at least 50 miles an hour and just make it really sick for you guys. All right, so I got it on its nose right now. Just gonna show you guys how I mounted the axle. Very simple, just got two bolts on each bearing and I have some slots cut out just so I can pull the axle backwards or forwards to tighten the chain when it wasn't broken. So that is very simple. Another thing I need to address is not sure if you can see this on camera, but this piece right here where the driver sits just in front of this is slightly bowed because I guess after sitting on that for so long, riding it around and having no support under there, all the weight and bouncing around slowly pulled this down. So it kind of has a bow on the bottom of it right here. So I'm gonna try to push that back up and put some sort of support right under where the driver will sit and I'm not gonna mess with the front at all because the front seems to be plenty strong. Not much weight is gonna be over those front wheels at all anyways, but I definitely need to support the back a little as well. And like I said before, I am cutting off everything from this cart. The only thing I'm keeping original is the basket itself. Everything else is gonna be redone. So I'm gonna be cutting off this old ugly square tubing frame I made, which is also holding my motor on. Get rid of all that and I'm actually going to be welding on a new uh, like circle tubing piece all the way around the back and I actually do have it almost made right there. It's ratchet strapped together because I was trying to get it the right lengths but uh, me and Charlie went over to PFI earlier today. Brent had some of this line around and we cut off a piece to length, put it in his tubing bender and got that bent up and now we are back over here. So this piece will be ready to go on pretty soon. I still have to just cut off all this old stuff. I'm probably gonna plasma cut it right, right under here because I don't like how when I made this, I made it on the inside of this original piece. I wanna try to make this look like it was all one piece and have it come off all nice the back right there. So probably gonna plasma cut that guy off, completely pull off this rear end. Gonna leave the steering for now because I'm gonna worry about that once I can get the motor and everything on there. But get all this redone, start working on it, and yeah, hopefully it's gonna be pretty badass from there, and I'm not sure what else I can really say about it, but you guys should get the idea. But I think it's gonna be a badass build. So if you guys are excited to see this, let me know what you guys think. And for those of you just now coming to the channel, definitely subscribe and see where this thing goes because I plan on getting quite a bit of work done on it pretty soon. But as you guys know, we have a lot of projects going on and you guys are probably gonna be telling me right now like I need to stick to one project, get it done, and that's probably true. Probably would be more efficient that way, but I like working on a whole bunch of things at once. I'm, I don't know, I'm just like that, but I really was excited about getting the motor for this shopping cart. 
and now I really want to start working on this, but trust me guys, all the other builds will be coming along. We're just kind of doing them all at once. But let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any questions about this, comment, I'll reply. But yeah, that's pretty much it. But there you guys go for those who subscribe to see this thing come along. I'm finally getting to it. I am really excited. It just looks it just looks so badass with that motor on the back of it. I honestly can't even wait. I have a lot of things I need to figure out, so I'm sure you guys are gonna have all kinds of questions about how it's gonna shift and the clutch and a whole bunch of shit, but I will get into that once we get that far. Honestly, in this video, I was going to plasma cut all that rear end stuff off. I have it set up over there and everything, but this video is probably gonna be long enough as it is, so I'm just gonna end it right here and pretty much just show you guys what it's gonna hopefully turn into in the near future. So. That's pretty much it guys, stay tuned. This thing's gonna be badass.